In this video, let's practice on chain rule one more time. We are asked to find a derivative of u with respect to p. u is the function that depends on x, y, and z. But x, y, and z depend on p, r, and t. So if you want to see a sketch of what is happening here, as a function u depends on x, y, z, and each depends on p, r, and t, p, r, and t, p, r, and t. So we could ask you to find the derivative of u with respect to p, r, or t, and that will be a challenging one, and that's exactly what they want you. They want you to dig into the deepest point here of p. We can ask you to find the derivative of u with respect to z, that will be easier, and so on. So again, people try to memorize the formula. I usually don't do it. I know how the process and I'm imagining it like digging into the pocket of the pants. Say I have three pockets on my pants, X, Y, and Z. So to find this partial derivative, we will start with writing down piece by piece. Derivative of U with respect to P will be First, you find derivative of u with respect to x. That will be this part, digging from u to x. But then you do and, and is chain rule. Derivative of x with respect to p, that is like opening the sub pocket of your pocket of the left leg of the jeans. So going to the left and then unzip the sub pocket and there is a candy there called p. Or to get that in the candy, I could go to the this part of genes, say it's right leg. So it's going to be derivative of u with respect to y times, and then I am zipping this sub pocket, derivative of y with respect to p. Or I could go to the back pocket, z, or whatever you can call third pocket, derivative of u with respect to z times derivative of z with respect to p. And that's how we get all possible derivative with respect, derivatives with respect to p from three different pockets, x, y, and z. You see those little errors I'm making? That's because I'm digging from u to x, x to p, u to y, y to p, u to z, z to p. And that's how I don't have to memorize the formula. I just know the process. And that makes it easy. So easier, I guess. Some students like to write down all derivatives in the row, uh, in the columns. I don't do that. I just want to find them right away and multiply them one by one. So derivative of u with respect to x and derivative of u with respect to y and derivative of u with respect to z will come from this location. That's These are first derivatives, right? So u with respect to x. I'm imagining everything else are constants. This can be written as x over y plus z plus y over y plus z. I'm kind of I'm doing common denominator here. If x is the only variable, then it's going to be 1 over y plus z plus 0. So it was pretty fast. Times derivative of x with respect to p. I'll put it in the blue color. I have to look here. No, blue is already used. So that's the green. I'm looking here. Derivative of x with respect to p is just 1. That was pretty good. Plus, going back to the blue box, derivative of u with respect to y will be, and that requires some quotient rule, because I see u both at the numerator and denominator. OK, so let's do that y plus z squared, derivative of the function on the top, so quotient rule, let me write down, quotient, quotient rule, derivative of x plus y with respect to y will be 1, copy y plus z minus copy x plus y, differentiate y plus z, which is 1, that should simplify to something nice, so it's not too bad. That was the first derivative. And now, derivative of y with respect to p, let's put it in the light blue color, it's over here. Derivative of y with respect to p is 1. Actually, they all will be 1s, I already see that. So at least uh, the second part is easy. 
plus derivative of u with respect to z. Now that is, it can be seen as a quotient rule or you can do chain rule if you want to. Do you know how to do chain rule if you want to? You can rewrite it as one more way. x plus y times y plus z to the minus 1. Then, since x plus y is a constant, I just copy it and then perform chain rule. So, x plus y is a constant. So, I'm just copying it. Derivative of y plus z to the minus 1, taking into account that z is a variable and y is a constant, will be minus 1 goes down, y plus z raised to the minus 2 times the derivative of y plus z with respect to y, which is 1. That was derivative of u with respect to z. Times derivative of z with respect to p, which is 1 again. Well, let's simplify all of this and see what we get. 1 over y plus z plus y plus z squared. What is happening here? I'm taking a pencil. It's going to be y plus z minus x minus y. So it's going to be y minus y is 0. z minus x. z minus x times 1 plus, and the third part gives me y plus z squared in a denominator because of this part, multiplied by minus 1 and x plus y. So it's going to be minus x minus y. That's this part because they all multiply. So that is my final answer with respect to x, y, and z. There is no P and R here, as you can see, because the derivative with respect to P was always 1. But we still need to give the answer with respect to the variable they're asking us to. So I'll put this in the box. And now I have to plug all the variables with respect to P and uh, all the variables x, y, and z. Oh, that's a lot of work, but uh, fine, let's do that. There is a common denominator here, so maybe we should consider that. Common denominator is y plus z squared. I'll multiply this time part by y plus z. It will be y plus z plus z minus x minus x minus y. So this simplifies to y plus z squared, y and minus y goes away, x and minus x goes away, and it becomes just z. Okay, that is very good. That is actually much better than I thought. It's just z all over y plus z squared. z is the function, which is p plus 6r minus 5t and y is a function p minus 6r plus 5t. Remember, they ask us to find the derivative with respect to p, so you have to give the answer with respect to p and r and t. So I'm gonna plug these two. Well, if there were x, I would plug x as well. Then partial derivative of u with respect to p will be z is p plus 6r minus 5t and then x plus and then y plus z is p plus 6r minus 5t plus p minus 6r plus 5t everything squared you don't have to simplify the square part in the denominator but everything inside, I think, will cancel out nicely. Almost everything. 6r and minus 6r, minus 5t and plus 5t. So the answer becomes p plus 6r minus 5t. All over p plus p squared. Which is 
P plus 6R minus 5T all over 4, so it's 2P squared, 4P squared. Minus 5t. Are you kidding me? How come? Let's see. Minus 2x. Ah. I see. Okay, I found a mistake. Here it is. I was too excited about canceling x's, but I, they actually added up to minus 2x. And why I lost this z? That is 2z. So fix it to be 2z minus 2x. Hmm. It will be a little bit more complicated than I just did, but only with the numerator. So it's going to be 2z minus 2x. What is my x? Fine, have to plug in x. x is p plus 6r plus 5t. p plus 6r plus 5t. So it's going to be p plus 6r plus 5t. Simplifying that, denominator looks fine to me. The numerator will be, let's see what cancels. 2p and minus 2p goes away. That's good. 6r times 2 and my minus 6r or 6r times minus 2 goes away and we have minus 5t minus 2 times 5t minus 2 times 5t so this will add up to become minus so it's minus 10 minus 10 minus 20 t simplify with 4 gives me minus 5t over p squared and this is the final answer that was a lot of work and it's only partial derivative with respect to p now go practice and find the partial derivative with respect to r and partial derivative with respect to t which means you know, also can try to dig into these extra pockets each will give you some kind of challenging situation because every time you will have to perform some kind of quotient rule or chain rule or none so that's an interesting thing to practice have fun and watch more videos